Hey, this is Todd from Request Metrics. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the browser's Beacon API to reliably send data as a user closes the browser. What the fuck is this? At Request Metrics, we gather performance data from real end users, real end users on your production websites. But we need to guarantee that we get all of that data when the user leaves the page, closes the browser, or ends their session. To guarantee that we get that data, we use the Beacon API. Have a look at the MDN spec. Navigator Send Beacon sends a small amount of data over HTTP to a web browser. Browser compatibility is really good on it, except of course for Internet Explorer. Let's have a look at a simple example. You can find this code on GitHub here. Well, I have a small server using Express.js. It just does a few things so that we can see what's going on on the server side. And we use that to just log out all of the requests we get. We're going to simulate our beacon by printing out all of the content type header and the request body and returning a 204 status code. This website loads a client.js script, which we're going to use to do our work. I've also set up my local environment with a host file. Host file. So that we can test cross origin behavior. We're not using SSL because it's still a pain in the ass to set up. Pain in the ass. So let's get started with the demo. On the right, we have our project in Visual Studio Code. Uh, it's already running the server, and I have our client JS file open. On the left, I have a version of Chrome. If I open this up with the DevTools open, I can see it pulls up our example.com port 3000, loading the client JS script. First, we need to do some compatibility checking. So we'll just do a little feature detection. If Navigator doesn't have a send beacon, let's just go ahead and return. Goodbye, Internet Explorer users. We need to run some code when the user's unloading the page. So let's create an on unload function to handle that. Ultimately, we need to call navigator.sendbeacon, which takes a URL and a data string. So the URL is going to be HTTP uh, beacon .request metrics .com port 3000 And I want to send it to slash API slash beacon. We're going to send it a text string simulating our data. For us, this data would be performance metrics. But for the purpose of this demo, we're just going to create an empty object with foo bar. We need to get it down to a string. So let's just JSON stringify it. We need to call our function by binding to the window event unload which is called as the page is being unloaded. Reloading the page, we don't see the request in our network tools, even though the server is clearly showing a beacon being sent. This is because beacons are sent after the page load. We need to turn on the preserve log option. Reloading the page, we'll see a bunch of the old information, including the beacon. There's a known bug, 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 bug in Chrome that has beacons always being shown as pending, even though the request has clearly finished. Using other browsers, like Firefox, shows the beacon correctly. Firefox rules. The beacon sends its data using the text plane content type, which isn't strictly correct as we're sending JSON. If this pisses you off, chill out. There's a way we can look at sending a special content type with our beacon using a blob type. Blob type. A blob can be instantiated in JavaScript, and we simply pass in our text to it along with a descriptor where we define a type as application JSON. However, it does not work. If we reload our browser, we'll see that the beacon is no longer being sent. We're only seeing a request to options. Changing this header has now made the request a cores request. Cores! This is more complex than just adding the cores headers to our API. We'd have to ensure that we sent a request to our API before attempting to send the beacon so that the pre-flight request can complete. If that wasn't painful enough, all of this has been disabled anyway as of Chrome 39 due to security concerns. So let's stick with text plane. Loading the same page with Safari, we can see that the beacons are being sent to the server. However, there is no record of them occurring in the dev tools at all. Way to go, Safari. But even worse, when we try to navigate to a different origin, the beacon is not sent at all. At first, I thought this was a security feature of Safari. However, it turns out it's an incompatibility with the unload event. Safari will not always send the unload event 
especially when navigating away or on mobile browsers. Instead, they send a different event called page high, which is triggered any time the page loses focus. I tested it with Chrome 81, Firefox 76, and Safari 13, and they all triggered the event. Changing our code to use the page hide event triggers the beacon on both reloads and navigations to other sites, making Safari work like the rest of the web should. Not all browsers are going to respond to the page hide event, so we should really listen on both page hide and unload and work on both. And in order to make sure we only send our data once, we should add a quick check to the top of our function. So that's how we use the beacon API in request metrics. Check out and subscribe to our channel, Building Request Metrics, for other videos about how we've been constructing the service and useful tidbits about APIs we use. Thanks for watching. At Request Metrics, we capture data. How do we get it back to our data? Back to our. Ugh, ugh, mm.